ideas, concepts, and words themselves, yet also dependent on them in that those very things suspended by music's enactment are paradoxically the very worldly circumstances that bring musicians together. But that opposition and symbiosis between music and the world, so to speak, proved amazingly fertile. We did another summer in Weimar the next year, 2000. In 2001, we went to Chicago. And last year, and for the next few years, our East-West Divan has been adopted by the Andalusian government, as well as a private foundation of three cultures. Seville has become our new home. From Weimar to Seville, with its history of Islamic and Jewish and Christian um, cultural interaction, is, I believe, a totally different trajectory and paradigm for Arabs and Israelis. There's no political program to what we do, since everything is subordinated to music, which for three weeks possesses everyone, in addition, of course, to the practical matter of living and working together. The point of telling you the story is to suggest how, despite the incredibly polarized, antagonistic, and discordant world in which we live, there's always the possibility of another alternative type of social model. Barenboim is no ordinary Israeli, of course. And I like to think, perhaps, I'm not an ordinary Palestinian either. But in our work and commitment to our friendship and to music making and discussion, and a disruption of the rigid lines that have circumscribed and organized our public as well as private lives, we go on. If it weren't for the rich emblematic status of Palestine and Israel, however, none of this would have been possible. Since it is because the complex issue itself, whose core from my, my point of view is the struggle for Palestinian human rights in a land sanctified by the three monotheistic religions, is so fertile with possibilities, ones that reach into culture, history, politics, and personal relations that we have been able to do what we do. Presiding over our efforts, students and teachers alike, has been the spirit of music, which I would want to insist is neither a sentimental panacea nor a facile solution for every problem, but rather a practical utopia whose presence and practice in our riven world is so sorely needed and in all sorts of ways intensely instructive. At least, therefore, another world emerges as a result against the backdrop of Andalusia, itself an alternative model for coexistence between the three monotheisms. And if it isn't immediately available on the world stage, it can at least signal the arrival of a new attitude whose example might soon provide us with many others, many salutary changes, many profound new interpretations of what is now only an appallingly polarized, completely inhuman conflict. In our work and planning and discussion, our main principle is that separation between peoples is not a solution for any of the problems that divide people. And certainly, and certainly ignorance of the other provides no help whatever. Cooperation and coexistence of the kind that music lived as we have lived, performed, shared, and loved it together might be. I, for one, am full of optimism despite the darkening sky and the seemingly, seemingly hopeless situation for the time being that encloses us all. Thank you. Thanks, Professor Saeed, for a tour de force performance. I feel, I feel some obligation to filibuster for a few minutes here to give Professor Saeed a chance to regain some strength, because I'm sure you'd all, many of you would like to either ask questions or hear questions and answers. What we're trying to do at the moment is set up a 
new structure here that will allow that. Uh, there are some microphones strategically positioned at either side of the stage here and here. If anyone would like to ask a question, I would request that you come up to the microphones and form an orderly line to do that. I'd also issue the standard uh, acknowledgement, which is that there's a difference between a question and a statement. And it's also true that brevity is the soul of wit and I think of rhetorical power. So for those who'd like to ask questions, I hope you can adhere to those age old maxims. And I think it seems to me that things have taken the appropriate form. I think we've had a chance for some water to be consumed. We've got the nice armchairs. As many of you who uh, live and work at UCLA know, Royce Hall is a much used venue. Uh, we managed to move this event here at the very last minute and I thank everybody associated with Royce Hall for making that possible. But it does mean, however, that we have to get out of here. So we have probably at maximum 20 minutes for question and answer period. So in the interests of that short time period, I hope everybody can ask their questions with maximum efficiency. Okay, I think we can probably start. Do I see under this light here, Haim Seidler Feller, a rabbi of UCLA Hillel, who can ask the first question. Haim? Thank you, thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure that I'm brief, it's unusual. Um, yes, and it, no statements. You have rhetorical flair, but on this occasion, we'll have to give, cede that flair. Right, I, I, I'm going to be quick. Number one, your remarks, for the most part, resemble those of, or the presentation, the portrait of George Bush that you gave us. That is, you gave us a picture that was black. You gave us a picture that was black and white, most similar to your critique of George Bush. And as a result, as a result, Ex excuse as me. a result, can we just hold on? Uh, I, I don't care about the as no, a result. I, uh, Haim, I care about the others. Can we just have the following simple rule, which is that I will do my best, short of physical means, to try to encourage questioners to pose questions briefly and to the point. As to expedite that, it would be really helpful if others could try to desist from intervening in said question asking. Hi. Okay. As a result, there were a couple of errors. I'm just going to mention a few of them that you made in service of your presentation. One, you talked about two-thirds of the Palestinian, 800,000 being expelled. I know of no such evidence for that. No uh, land ownership by non-Jews. The Israeli Supreme Court... The Israeli Supreme Court in September of 2000 uh, explicitly stated that there can be land ownership by non-Jews. Number three, trees, trees for Palestinians. I myself... Excuse me, excuse me. No, no, I mean, I, this, is a, this is a university, guys. Let's yeah, go. I am. Excuse me. Shh. We're just not going to get very far unless we get from the question to the presenter. So the time is the, the time bomb is ticking here. I hope you understand, Haim, that I hope you can okay. finish. I'm finishing. Finishing, I'm finishing in 20 seconds All right. so we can move on. Thank All right. you. All right. Forget about it. I, I, I personally have raised money for trees, and there's an organization called Rabbis for Human Rights. I mentioned the question. All right, I'm, I'm moving. I find the emphasis on memory to be paralytic. You have no vision for a future other than the story that you told. Because memory is, your memory is mired in suffering. I don't see my commonality. 67 boundaries, Jerusalem shared capital, refugees, uh, adjustments on refugees, etc. Will you agree, will you agree to sign okay. a peace a statement question, uh, for the future? I, Thank you. I just want to say that I deeply resent Filibuster. Uh, you were supposed to, I just want to show you how you're, you've done your case, a massive injustice. You've, you were supposed to ask the question, you made a series of accusations and you the lack of falsehoods, which illustrates precisely what I've been saying about Israel, in that it refuses to take any responsibility for the, for the suffering it's imposed on Palestinians. Not a word, just let me finish, let me finish. Not a word you said 
indicates the slightest regret, mired in suffering indeed, and who wants the world to share its suffering?